All right, in this lecture we're going to be discussing imaging artifacts. Essentially, these are artifacts that um, the machine misinterprets and creates on the image. They are not structures that exist within the body, um, but the machine, uh, for various reasons, uh, misinterprets that and displays them on your ultrasound image. Uh, to understand this, because we're going to talk about some of these, um, use some of this lingo as we talk about this, we need to understand what... Um, what the different structures are in comparison. So echogenic just means that there's returning sound waves that creates a, a grayscale uh, pixel on the ultrasound image. You can have structures that are hyperechoic or brighter or wider than other structures. So this is hyperechoic compared to this circle and hyperechoic to the surrounding tissues. Uh, this would be, um, whereas this, there's a circle in here, but it's isoechoic to the surrounding structures. Um, so it's not obvious an obvious dif uh, distinct structure. Uh, you have hypoechoic, which is a darker or uh, darker structure compared to the surrounding tissue like we see here. And then you have anechoic, which is loss of echoes, uh, which results in a complete um, area of blackness. So when we talk about ultrasound artifacts, there are uh, essentially um, attenuation artifacts um, where there's, it, there's loss of um, ultrasound waves in a sense and um, propagation artifacts um, and then we have some miscellaneous ones so uh, one of our artifacts is shadowing here we see the liver in this area we see the gallbladder here and we come down to the neck and there's a hyper echogenic structure which is a gallstone sitting here in the neck and then we have because all the ultrasound waves come down and reflect back to the machine we have loss of echoes behind that and that creates this anechoic or black strip which is, um, is shadowing. Uh, another one that we have um, is posterior enhancement. So as an ultrasound wave travels here, it comes down and it's absorbed, reflected, scattered, um, all of those uh, attenuation uh, factors that we discussed before. However, a sound wave coming down through and traveling through the bladder uh, is unimpeded as it travels through fluid. And then that, so the amplitude is never decreasing. As it hits the posterior wall of the bladder, a large um, amount of that is reflected back to the, the machine. And because it, of that large amplitude that returns, it, cre it creates this bright structure or hyperechoic structure. Now overall, this image does have too much gain on it, um, but this is clearly brighter than, say, at the same level over in here. Edge artifact has to do with when a, uh, ultrasound wave comes down and is deflected so in other words you know a beam coming here doesn't experience the same uh, reflective uh, structures that it does here and so you'll have this beam come off and as you notice right here along the edge we have a black spot that exists you can see it over here and that's edge artifact um, and that's not because there's absence of a structure there it's just that the ultrasound wave as it encounters this is, is uh, deflected off to the side or refracted and see the same thing a lot of times around the kidney and you got to be careful like in a fast exam this can be misinterpreted as fluid but as the ultrasound wave comes here it's hitting here and reflecting off this way and so you've got an area that's that looks like it's got some edge artifact right along there so we have reverberation artifact and so is what happens is you have a structure here and in it and this will be often be seen in foreign bodies or um, other structures like that or needle placement. You have an ultrasound beam travel down. Some of it's going to hit this needle here and it's going to bring it right back up to the probe. And you're, so you see the structure, but some of it's going to make it past it. It's going to make it past it, comes back, hits the, the needle, bounces back, hits the tissue, and then makes it back past and up to the machine. So it kind of ping pongs back and forth off of that and creates what looks like additional structures down in here as you see that um, coming off the needle here. A comet tail is similar uh, to a reverberation artifact. Um, in most cases, it's going to bounce between an air fluid interface, and it's not usually a foreign body. So on this lung ultrasound, we see a bunch of um, structures up here, and they come down, and they comet tail off of that. Uh, people also call these lung rockets in this example. Uh, you can see that in the bow uh, when there's a strong air-water interfa interface. And essentially, is what it is is it's that same ping-pong uh, um, philosophy that's happening as it bounces back and forth between air sacs and water and ping pongs back and forth but eventually some of that sand wave amplitude makes it back to the machine and creates uh, this structure. 
Uh, we have mirror imaging. Now mirror imaging creates um, essentially a reflection of other structures when they're not really there. You'll see this most often um, in areas or you will see it in areas of where there's a strong difference in uh, tissue velocity. For example, uh, here we have muscle and then this is a lung ultrasound with a linear probe and right here is your pleural line. So this is actually lung here and is not uh, striated muscular tissue as we see up here but because of the strong interface that it has um, we get this reflective structure behind it and it's confusing to the machine as it as it bounces back and forth between air, air, area, air and this uh, somewhat fluid filled structures and it creates a um, an image that appears on the other side and so as what happens is you know these images come down they bounce off and ping pong again back and forth till you hit back up here and it creates a flipped flip view of, of this structure for example is right there and all these other uh, echogenic structures are down here um, so they're not real real uh, are, are real true structures but they they do appear to be uh, ring down is similar to our comet tails or reverberation artifact. Um, we have that here. We've got some bowel. This is our gallbladder here, and we have some bowel just posterior or deep to it. And you can get what looks like it creates a structure right here. Um, and this would be our ring down artifact. Um, and once again, that represents a structure that's not truly there, um, but it's confusing to the machine. So it creates that structure on your image. Uh, side lobe artifact, some of this has to do with the fact that this is over gain. This is the same image that we had for the posterior enhancement. But because of whatever reason, we're getting some um, some of these arced waves right here, or sound wave images, and that's side lobe artifact. Those do not represent uh, true structures, but you can get those uh, around calcified areas. You'll see that sometimes on your heart. You can see it on your bladder when there's some strong uh, interfaces with the, uh, the bladder fluid field structure and the uh, underlying anatomy. So hopefully that helps uh, to avoid some common pitfalls of interpreting um, artifacts as pathology. Um, and if you have any questions or comments on that, let us know. Uh, hopefully we can uh, answer those. Thank you.